Hi folks, so in these videos I am going to introduce to you um, some important web security concepts um, starting with what cookies are um, and how they work. I'm going to talk a bit about session management and how websites um, allow you to, to log in and authenticate. I'm going to talk about attacks against those systems um, and security in general, and different security options uh, and some defensive stuff. So you know, the way that websites are able to track your, uh, that you are coming back to website um, and to kind of keep your experience um, customized or different from someone else's experience on that same website is through cookies. So originally when the internet was first designed, sorry, when the web was first designed, when HTTP was designed, it was completely stateless. So if you um, visited a web page, the server would just give you the page you asked for. So, okay, well, I want index.html. It looks on the server and says, do I have an index.html file? I do, okay, here you go. Here's that file that you asked for. Um, and that's basically what a web server did. The, it just served up web pages. And you know the great thing about the web was the fact that it linked resources to other resources. So you had links you could you know, follow from one page to another. Um, but at first it was just, that's what it was. It was stateless. Uh, but modern websites want to be able to track users, um, to be able to customize the experience to you, um, and to be able to have your ability to log into the website and things like that. Um, and that's what cookies are used for. And originally cookies were designed for Netscape, which was one of the first web browsers to enable a virtual shopping cart. So they wanted to be able to do this. I realized they needed new technology and um, they invented cookies. So a cookie is a short amount of data. So it's a, uh, up to 4,096 bytes. Um, so around four kilobytes um, of, of data as a maximum. And typically what, where it starts is the server sends it to the client and then it gets stored on the client and every time that client like a web browser revisits the same website um, it will um, resend all this all of the cookies that exist for that the web browser has for that website each time you visit the page so it will send it along again it is possible that the javascript can set um, can also set cookies. So it could be set in the client by JavaScript. But then each time that you go back to the website, those cookies get sent along. So here's an example of what it might look like. So first of all, we've got a web browser asking for a, a page um, and telling it what protocol it's using and what web server it um, is talking to. The server says, uh, okay, uh, yeah, I've got that file, that's fine or you know, I can generate that content for you nowadays. And um, you know, expect for me to send you some web content. Um, oh, and set a cookie. So the server can set a heading that says set cookie, and then the cookie is, in this example, theme equals light, so the light theme to the website. Um, and then every time the web browser makes another request, that gets sent back along. So, um, you know, and if, that um, in this example, the user wanted to change to a dark mode for the, for the website, as we all should, because it's a nicer experience, in, in my opinion, then um, you know, that might happen in the JavaScript of the client, for example, we can reset it so that it's dark mode. But then every time you visited that from that same web browser, you, you went back to that other pages on that same server, it would send along what theme um, wanted to be used. So, Cookies can send, um, store basically anything. So you could put a username in it um, or a credit card number, um, you know, and <clears throat> those might not actually be good ideas, but you could store anything in a cookie. It's just arbitrary data, whatever the server or um, JavaScript decides to put in there. And um, one of the ways that cookies are used are with um, session cookies or authentication cookies. Uh, and that's basically how you track a user is logged into a website. 
Um, it's typically can look like, like a random ID string. Um, and all the user information is usually stored on the server and not inside the cookie itself. Um, but in the next video, after this short video, I'll um, talk about that in some more detail. And another way that cookies are used are third-party tracking cookies. So if you um, live in the EU or just visit websites that um, are accommodating EU laws, um, they will tell you, uh, just so you know, we use cookies. Uh, is this okay? I think this is very um, annoying because pretty much every single website that does anything vaguely interesting is going to need cookies to function. Um, and so it doesn't really tell you much. Um, what would be maybe more useful is if they told you if they're using um, third-party tracking cookies and that how they were being used maybe, but anyway. Um, so third-party um, cookies are, you know, you kind of expect when you go to a website, the website that you're on knows that you're there and knows what you're doing on their website. But what you might not realize is that um, other people know what you're doing as well. So pretty much Google will know the vast majority of what you're doing on the internet, um, even if you never visit Google's website. And that's because a huge number of web servers use Google Analytics to track you, to track their, you know, um, statistics and things of visitors on their website, um, and they use Google Advertising. So, you know, every time you visit a website, Google knows about it because there's some JavaScript that gets loaded up into that web page and it loads a bunch of cookies um, over, um, you know, from Google. So Google get, gets updated as to the things that you're doing. Um, similarly, with things like Facebook and other widget-based things like little like buttons and things like that, every website that includes one of those is basically letting Facebook know that you visited that page. Um, so even if you don't even have a Facebook account, you never created an account with Facebook, there's a good chance that Facebook knows that you as a identify, well, maybe not personally identifiable, but you as an individual um, have visited these kind of websites. And, you know, I guess they can see things like, well, people that like these websites also like these websites, or, you know, can target advertising at you, even if you've never logged into Facebook, just because of the fact that you've visited web pages that have Facebook kind of features built into them. So, um, it allows third parties to kind of track and see what, um, kind of keep track of your browsing history and what you're doing. Uh, and that's how you can do things like sometimes if you're on a website, it will give you advertising for other websites that you've been to in the past, even if you've never logged into them. Um, you can set your web browser to disable um, third party cookies. And for a while it looked like, you know, Facebook was saying they were going to make that the default. But there's a lot of financial, um, you know, companies that do advertising and things that you know, very vocally against uh, against that. And, you know, as far as I know, Facebook still haven't, hasn't made that the default. But you can go in and change that and um, turn off third-party cookies if you like. You might see that you get less targeted advertising and, um, you know, maybe some um, websites will act a little bit differently, but mostly it will work. And, um, you know, you have better privacy. So... When you set a cookie, you can also set an expiry date. Um, so if you set a date on it, then when you close the web browser and you open it again, and until that date's reached, the cookie will continue to live on. So you can close your web browser and open it again. If you don't set like this uh, an expiry date, if you just use the example from the previous slide, then the um, the it's a um, a temporary um, cookie, a session cookie. So it will disappear the next time you um, close your web browser. The next time you open it, it won't be there anymore. Um, but if you set it, it's a persistent cookie and it will stay there. So um, that's a good overview of cookies and what they are. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the security properties and how they're used to um, track sessions on websites.